Hello, I'm Dr Imogen Tedbury and I'm an art historian. I've been researching Royal Holloway's portraits of our first women academics, the early principals who were pioneers in women's education. Today I'm looking at portraits of Margaret Duke. She was the longest serving principal of Bedford College, which was the first women's college in the UK, and merged with Royal Holloway in 1985. We have not one, not two, but three portraits of Margaret Duke in the collection, which is fairly unusual, and I wondered why. In this first portrait from 1914, Duke wears a black gown and blue silk lined hood, the academic dress of Trinity College Dublin. But she hadn't studied at Dublin. She was actually one of the first women to study at Cambridge in the 1880s, at a time when Cambridge refused to give degrees to women. Tuke wears this gown because she was one of the steamboat ladies who travelled by boat to Dublin to receive their degrees from Trinity College. This portrait presents a strong-willed woman looking out at us with a very direct gaze, wearing the symbol of her authority, her academic gown. Many of you will recognise this painting from a smaller version that hangs in the college dining hall. This one is rather more sketchy in feel and is missing some of the beautiful details like Tuke's delicate hands. Part of our role as art historians is to investigate the history of our paintings. Who painted them, who paid for them and why? For this we really need the help of colleagues like Annabel Valentine, our college archivist, who keeps track of over 150 years of college history. I went to see Annabel to find out why we have two versions of the same painting. These two files are both about the cheek portraits. These files reveal the name of the artist, Reginald Grenville Eaves. I should very much enjoy painting Miss Tuke as a portrait of that kind is most attractive to me. There we go. There we go. Another letter describes the second portrait. This sketch portrait was made and then given to the principal. So the smaller painting in the dining hall is actually a sketch, a working draft Eve's made in preparation for the final larger painting. And the sketch was given by the artist to Tuke herself. I guess that still doesn't quite answer the question as to why Bedford College ended up with a portrait rather than it being in Tuke's private art collection. Let's not forget we also have a third portrait of Margaret Tuke, painted by Frances Dodd after she retired in the 1930s. This portrait takes inspiration from paintings of the Italian Renaissance. The green curtain, fur collar, fictive stone ledge, even the signature on the scrap of paper. It's also painted on wood panel, a technique used before painters started to work on canvas, and even framed in an antique Italian cassetta frame. All very appropriate for Tuke, a linguist who specialised in Italian. But why would Bedford College want a third painting of Tuke if they already had two? Why are there so many paintings of Margaret Tuke? I went to see Annabel again, and we found a letter explaining why this third painting was commissioned. The existing portrait does not please many people. And I understand that the sitter herself, Tuke that is, though she chose the artist, dislikes the picture. Or should we say, both of those pictures. No one likes the current one, and they including think, Tuke herself. including Tuke herself. And that maybe explains why she gave the second version of the portrait to the college. Yeah, she didn't want it in her house. Didn't want it in her house. <laughs> Mystery solved. Ironically, this portrait also went down pretty badly with the college, who concluded that no painter could have succeeded in capturing Tuke's true appearance. So there you have it, three portraits of Margaret Tuke. She wasn't satisfied by any of them, but she continues to watch over us from her vantage point in the dining hall, 